Good morning and welcome to the Killick & Co market update. As we talked about in the last couple of videos, growth stocks have had quite a difficult start to this year and investors were quite nervous and jittery leading up to this corporate reporting season, especially in relation to the tech sector. So far this week, companies that have beaten expectations have seen quite big relief rallies in their shares, but companies that have disappointed have experienced quite big, unforgiving sell-offs in their shares. This week, we've had a number of big tech companies reporting. First up, we had Google owner Alphabet, who reported early this week. Advertising revenues for its core search business were really strong, and Google Cloud also put in a great performance, so shares were up 7.5% when those results came out. After that, we had results from PayPal and from Meta, which is the new name for Facebook. PayPal reduced its forecast for the number of new accounts it expects to gain this year. And this is not the first time that management have had to reduce guidance, and arguably they've lost a bit of credibility for doing it again in such quick succession. And that's no doubt the reason why the shares were down 24.6% when the results came out. Meta then admitted that young people are spending more time on rival platforms such as TikTok and Snapchat, so their shares were down 26.4%. And after two such big falls, I'll admit there was a lot of nervousness leading up to the publication of Amazon's results last night. But I'm very relieved to say that those results did beat expectations and shares were up over 14% in after hours trading last night. Amazon, Alphabet and Microsoft are still the biggest companies on the stock exchange and all three of those companies have published results that have beaten expectations. So that should provide some reassurance to investors who have been feeling a bit nervous about the tech sector. Let's take a look at those Amazon results in a bit more detail. One of the key numbers that analysts were looking for was the net sales figure for the fourth quarter of 2021. And that came in at $137 billion, and that was 9% ahead of the equivalent number for 2020. So investors were very happy with that. AWS, or Amazon Web Services, which is Amazon's cloud computing division, which is responsible for more than half of the company's profits, also put in a very good number for this quarter. And also Amazon announced that it would be raising the cost of a Prime membership for people in the US by $20 per year. So the market was very happy with that as well. The main negative about these results was the increase in the wage bill, which is broadly expected. Amazon has suffered from a number of staff absences due to COVID-19, and it's also had to raise wages to carry on attracting staff. And over the longer term, that is likely to encourage Amazon to invest more quickly in automating as many of its processes as possible. The cost of living squeeze continues here in the UK, and this week the energy price cap went up by a massive 54%. The energy price cap is there to allow energy companies to pass on reasonable costs to consumers. So let's have a look at why it's gone up by quite such a high amount. This chart shows the various elements of the cap. There are lots of different ones, but I'm mainly interested in the green and the gray blocks on this chart. The green is wholesale, which is how much the energy suppliers are having to pay for the energy that they're passing on to consumers. Gas and electricity prices on the wholesale market have spiked. So this element of the cap has gone up by 104% from 528 pounds to 1,077 pounds. The gray bit on the chart shows money going to power networks, and that has gone up a lot due to the cost of transferring so many customers from all the energy companies that have gone bust this year. So that's the energy price cap, that's gone up a lot. The other bad news for some UK individuals this week is the second interest rate rise here in the UK. Rates have gone up from 0.25% to 0.5%. And while that should help with inflation over the longer run, in the short term, it's gonna be bad news for any consumers taking out new loans and any individuals on tracker rate mortgages. When this latest interest rate rise was announced, we did see a spike in government bond yields. Here's a chart showing the UK 10-year government bond yield, and you can see it's gone up from 0.2% in the middle of that COVID crash, up to just below 1.4% today. So that's in anticipation of higher interest rates in future. Moving on to have a look at next week, we've got lots of energy companies reporting, and we're expecting results out from BP, from Lindy, the hydrogen company, and from renewable power company, SSE. That's it from us. Enjoy the weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.